Welcome. 5-4, Practice and Problem Solving on Envision. We're going to be learning about graphing ratios, guys. You see, up until now, we've been doing uh, ratio tables and proportions and double line diagrams. And for this, we're going to take a ratio table and then graph it. So let's get started on 5-4, Practice and Problem Solving for Envision. My name is Jason Jacobs. Let's do our homework together. Of course, you have different problems on yours than, than I do, but uh, it follows the same format. So I hope I can help. I hope you're having a great day. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. And 5 times 5 is 25. So you want to look for relationships on these ratio tables. So the first one was times 2. The next one we did 5 times 3 was 15. So you go 2 times 3. Now, some people put 3 in there. That's wrong. That's the relationship. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then... Um, 5 times 4 was 20, so 2 times 4 is 8. And then uh, 5 times 5 is 25, so 2 times 5 is 10. Now, sometimes, you see, this is going by multiples of 5s. This is going by multiples of 2. Sometimes they'll trick you, and you'll think it's going by multiples of 5. Then all of a sudden, they'll put, like, 40 here. And then they'll think that they'll try to trick you that way. So just watch out for that, and you'll be just fine. Let's see if we got it. All right, now we got a graphic, guys. And um, isn't it a bummer when we got to keep scrolling up and down? But uh, this is the X. This is the Y, the X coordinate and Y coordinate. So over 2, up 5. So we go, if you notice here, this is counting by 2s. 2, 4, 6. And this is counting by 5s. 5, 10, 15. So over 2, up 5. Well, that one works. Next one is 4, 10. Over 4, up 10. That one works. Would it be the first one over 6 sub 15? Yeah, so it's the first one, guys. Wow, that wasn't too bad. Any others that they added? No, I think we're good. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right, now 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 um, 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 5 is 10. Then you go 3 times what is 18? That's right, 6. So 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times what is 21? That's right, 7. So 2 times 7 is 14. All right, good job. And I'll go for the graph. Over 3, up 2. All right, so it looks like this is counting by 2s here, and this one's counting by 3, 6, 9, 12. But we got to go over. So Oh, so they, they switched the x and y axis on us there. we got to go over 3, up 2. So um, now they're, they're tricking us on that one too because they switched the x and y axis on us. So um, over 3 up two. See, this one's counting by twos, and this is counting by threes. And then we go, then it is over 12, up eight. All right, let's check that one. Over 12, up eight. Yep, so it is this one. You'll notice it's going to make a straight line, and it's going to go through the origin. So this indicates that it's not it, because it's not going through the origin similarly <laughs> for this one guys and what else can I tell you about this yeah the dash line means that uh, if it were if we were, if you were like buying balloons or something you can't buy like 3.2 balloons for example so that's what the dash line means it means uh, uh, you can't get part of something so it's got to be in whole number integers there All right, a student runs five minutes for every 20 minutes she walks. Complete the table and graph the ratios. That sounds about me. I can run about five minutes, then I got to walk a while. <laughs> so uh, look, look at this, guys. Five times two is 10. So 20 times two is 40. So you have a relationship going this way with ratios. And then an XY relationship, five times four is 20, 10 times four is 40. So you have 
those two relationships there. For the ratio tables, we do it like this. 5 times 3 is 15, and 20 times 3 is 60. 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 4 is 80. 5 times 5 is 25, and 20 times 5 is 100. Let's graph them. Let's graph it. Over 5, up 20. So we want to, running is here. Over 5, 5, 10, 15, okay, and 20, 40, 60. All right, good. Good, good, good. Over 5, up 20. That's up 40, so it's not that one. Over 5, up 20, good. Over 10, up 40. Over 15, up 60, yeah. Notice these are decreasing. And that wasn't happening on the table, so. Is that it? Okay. Moving right along. Oh, yes. This one, you probably came to get uh, this gas mileage one. A consumer group reports the number of miles driven for different amounts of gas, which travels. Oh, uh, this down here was distracting me. Where was I? Which car travels the farthest on one gallon of gas? So miles per gallon. How many miles can you go on one gallon? Let's check it out. So we're, we have three cars here. You have car A with a ratio table, and you have car B with this information here, 145 miles for every five gallons. You would do 145 divided by five to figure out what, how many miles per one gallon, which we're going to have to do. And then you have car C which is um, for three gallons of gas, you can drive 81 miles. So you would do 81 divided by three to figure out that. We're going to do that in just a second. But first, we have five times two is 10. So what times two is 225? So we have to, or 250, I'm sorry. So we go 250 divided by two, and you get 125 in my case. And now... Uh, 125 times 3 is 375, so 5 times 3 is 15. Now, they're hook, line, and sinkering you into thinking 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then 50. Watch out for that one because I see a lot of students making a mistake on that one. So, here we go. 5 times 4 is 20, and 125 times 4 is 500. Now, 125 times 6 is 625, so 5 times 6 is 30. Now, at this point, you're thinking, okay, this is going by multiples of 125, right? But no, watch. 5 times 10 is 50. So 125 times 10 is 1,250. So that's where they trick you and maybe I got tricked too on that one too. Five times ten. Where did I get tricked guys? Oh, probably on this one because um, 125 times five and five times five is 25. So this one's 25. That one's 25. Okay, so that's where I got tricked. I got tricked on the one I shouldn't have gotten tricked by guys. You know car A gets how many miles per 10 gallons? Well, let's just check that. So car A gets um, per 10 gallons, 250 miles. So that's what's known as the known ratio. That is the known ratio. And car B gets, well, let's go back and check that, 145 miles per five gallons in my case. And car C gets 80, yeah, 81 miles per three gallons. So all you got to do is just check those for those cases. You will need to find which car has the best gas mileage. Not the worst. So let's do that. So in order to do find which car has the best gas mileage, what you can do is I can make a ratio table for car B. Well, we got to do it for car C too. We got to make a ratio table for car A and for, well, A is already done for, so for car B and for car C is what they're looking for. I mean, for me, I just find the unit rates and I can tell right away. And we're going to do that next. But 
If you wanted to, you could uh, do a ratio table for cars B and C to find equivalent ratios, then compare it to cars A, B, and C. So that's what we're looking for, to make a ratio table just like we did for car A, for car B, and car C. So that's one way to do it. The way I like to do it, now we're going to find miles per gallon. So what we do is for car A, if you recall, we'll, we'll do uh, 250 divided by 10. I'm going to do, you could do 125 divided by 5, but this is good because you just cancel out these zeros and you get 25 miles per gallon. So this is, car A gets 25 miles per gallon. Now car B, let's just go up here, is 145 divided by 5. So do 145 divided by 5 and we get 29 miles per gallon. Okay, so car B is looking a little better. We can drive a little further on that gallon. And car C, I think, was um, 81 divided by 3. It's 27 miles per gallon. So not bad, not bad, but not the best. So car B goes the furthest on one gallon because I compare the ratios to not one mile, but one gallon of gas, kind of getting the unit rate, which is hinting on to what is coming in topic five. Okay, so that, that one's probably why you came to check out this video, I'd say. All right, so 10 cups of white flour for every four cups of wheat flour. Complete the table to show how many cups of wheat flour are needed to mix with 50 cups of white flour. So go ahead and make these ratio tables, even when they're not here. I think I find them very helpful. So we have the four, and then 10 times two is 20, and four times two is eight, and then times three, so that's 12, and then 10 times four is 40, and four times four is 16. And 10 times 5 is 50, and 4 times 5 is uh, 20. All right, here we go. So it was 10 to 4. Um, so 10, 10 to 4. So over 10 for white flour. Over 10 for white flour. And then up 4. Yeah, that makes sense because it's going by 4s, x going by 10s. So that makes sense there. And then it was over 20, up 8. Yeah. Over 30, up 12. Yeah, so I'm thinking it's uh, A in my case. This just doesn't look right. You see why white flower 10, going by 10s for white flower? That's going by 7s. Where would they get that 21? Oh, there, because, yeah, it eventually goes up to 21 right there. Uh, so, yeah, not, not that one either. All right, so it is the A. All right. The graph shows the, I love these type of questions. Well, actually love hate relationship with them because uh, they are, they really check your understanding because they're tough even for me. And I've been in sixth grade for what, like 16 years, but uh, they're a pain to do, right? So uh, I'll help you through it. The graph shows the relationship between the number of cups of sugar and the number of cups of flour in a recipe. Decide which statements are true based on the graph. So, okay, let's just take a look at this graph. It looks like for every 10 cups of flour, there are two cups of sugar. Okay, so that means for every one cup of sugar, there's five cups of flour. All right, so all that's important to think about. So the point 24 represents 20 cups of flour. So 24 is 20 cups of flour to four cups of sugar. So 20 cups of flour and four cups of sugar. That is true. One ratio of, of cups of flour to cups of sugar is 10 to 2. So flour first, then sugar. Ten, flour first, 10 to 2. That is also true. To use two cups of flour, so two cups of flour, one, two. Looks like we have not even a cup of sugar, less than one cup of sugar. Okay, you need 10 cups. Of, 10 cups of sugar would be way up here. They're tricking you guys. 
you need 0.2 cups of sugar. Yeah, yeah. So there it is. So um, for one cup of flour, you need 0.2 cups of sugar because 2 divided by 10. Yeah, so there it is. All right, guys. We did it. We did it. I hope you have a awesome day. Great rest of your week. And thanks for doing your homework with uh, with me. Come back. Come back and visit. We'll do some more uh, Envision. Take care, guys. Bye.